What's up guys, I'm Super Can B and this is my brother Chase Bennett and this is Bros Talk Baseball. In this video, we're going to be telling you about five things that you should know when starting your own fantasy baseball team. So first off, we're going to start with the basics. If you're like most of America and your co-workers are doing fantasy baseball league and you're like, oh, I'll join just to fit in and you have no idea what you're doing, this is what you need to know. So there are two different leagues in fantasy baseball. The first one is a point system called Rotisserie League. And basically what that means is how your players perform in a game, they add up points and total points at the end of the week, wins the week there. Boom, done. Easy. Roto. Second of the two basic leagues is the head-to-head -head league. And these are broken into categories. For instance, batting average, hits, ERA to be simple. How your team performs, it goes in each category. Whoever wins the most categories out of all, let's say, 10 of them, wins the week. Now this is important to know because if you're in a Roto league, some of the players that you could get, you don't have to really specify whether they're good at hitting home runs or stolen bases or hits or average or whatever. You could have a power team. As long as you're getting any points and you're winning, you're good. But if you're in a head-to-head -head league, you want to diversify your team. You want maybe D. Gordon out there. You normally, you wouldn't draft him, but he's going to get you stolen bases. Anyways, that's why it's important to know the difference. <laughs> Long story short, it brings us into part two. Two, 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 two. Research. This is important. Why is it important? It's because it's how you build a professional team. I mean, big time, big league team. The best team in your league. Like most of you, you probably are like, uh, research. But how do you even know what to research if you have no idea what you're doing? First thing you want to look at is depth charts. You don't want to draft a player, Mike Trout, stardom power, but he's not playing. He's not going to be good on your fantasy team. The next thing you want to research is how well they're doing in spring training. Most of the time, about 85% of the time, if they're red hot in spring training, they'll carry that straight into the regular season. So you want to look at the stats from spring training. Unless it's like a, a guy who's not going to be in the MLB and just having a good spring training, don't even worry about him. That's someone you just keep on your radar. It's someone you just like, okay, maybe for next year. But for this year, you got to look at starters who are doing well in spring training, and that'll bring you a successful team. Third thing you got to look at is ceiling. If a player is being scouted, with a high ceiling and he's going to get the opportunity, that might be a guy you can take a risk on. And also, it might be a valuable player to pick in a low-level round. Maybe guys who have the physical tools, who haven't figured it out on the, on the field yet. Guys who have the physical and the skills, but they finally getting their start somewhere fresh. Guys who have had great seasons in the past, but they struggled a little bit and they're looking for a bounce-back year. The higher the ceiling, the more production that they're able to project onto your team. Alright, so the next one we have is health viability. You gotta make sure that your players are healthy and have been proven to be healthy in the past. Health liabilities are a good gamble if, say, it's a freak accident. If they're like straining their hamstring or something like that every single time they run, that might be an issue. But if it's something like I ran into the wall, I broke my leg. <laughs> <laughs> that guy might be coming back stronger than ever. Last thing you gotta do research on is the team that they're playing on in the field that they're playing at. Two teams that come to mind, the Yankees and the Rockies. Both teams play in stadiums that are hitter friendly. They got short porches, ball flies farther in Denver. I don't know why. No, I'm just kidding. I know why. It's because the air is thinner, but like, I don't want to bother you with the scientific stuff. Yeah, a player like Giancarlo Stanton. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He's hitting balls like way out of Miami. Can you imagine what he's gonna do at the Yankees? And if you don't believe us about these hitter-friendly parks, just do your research and look at the stats in these teams because trust me, I bet you that Yankees and the Rockies are up there top five offenses. I guarantee you half your league doesn't look into the same. Let's move on to the draft. This is the big shebang. This is the moment you've been waiting for. You've been doing your research. You know what league you're in. Now it's time to draft. And you're like, yo, I'm going to get this guy first pick. Then I'm going to get this guy in the second round because he's ranked 22 overall. False. How the draft works, it's like a Texas Hold'em game. You're playing the other players, all right? The first pick will go first in the first round and then last in the second round. It's like a snake. So it'll go beep and then come back around and then go back around. When you're doing the draft, try not to draft people in the same position, an oversaturated position, and then expect to trade for another position after the draft ends. Our fourth tip is strategy. Now you want to go into the draft with a game plan, a backup game plan, and then the backup to the backup, the backup, the backup game plan. Things are gonna happen and you're not gonna expect it. You have like a minute to pick a player, you don't wanna pick somebody that you know is gonna flop. What I usually do, I have at least three or four positions per round that I could draft. That way, if I'm forced to pick a shortstop in the fourth round, I could pick my second baseman in the sixth. If I'm short a starting pitcher and I'm in the, I don't know, 
20th round, I have someone I can pick. That way, you can be happy with your team. You don't have to worry about trading. Another strategy that I have is I alternate between consistent players and risk factors. I believe in the sophomore slump and I also believe in the comeback season. So what I would do for my risk factors is I'll bet against the, the kids who, like Cody Bellinger or uh, who was another guy that was just, like Trey Turner last year, uh, who had really good rookie campaigns. And I think they're gonna just kind of, they're overvalued in the draft, so I won't, I'll stay away from those guys. I'll pick the guys like Trey Turner this year, who had a little sophomore slump last year and it's gonna bounce back. For drafting, one of the strategies for me is to use that cue bar. When other people are drafting their picks, you gotta use that 10 to 15 minutes to really research and make sure you have five to 10 players that will be there in your next pick if someone else takes one of the picks that you have in mind. If you have one player, you're like, okay, I want this player next, and he gets taken and it's your turn with one minute and no idea what to do, then you're gonna panic mode and pick someone you don't want on your team. The last tip is when the season starts, how to play your team. Now, successful teams ride the waiver wire. Don't be afraid to still do research when in season. You want to pick up hot bats. You want to sell hot bats. You need to know when to keep a guy when he's struggling or when to sell a guy right before he starts struggling. You need to know if you're getting production out of a guy who's injury prone. Towards the end of the season is when the injuries start coming out. So when to sell them off or when to bet on a guy. When to think, oh, his best days are to come. Carlos Gonzalez, who had a struggling first half of the season and then exploded the second half. For example, Stanton last year. Stanton had a decent, but not a Stanton first half and hit about 30, 40 jacks. Oh yeah, because like it was all the it was like the judge hour yeah. in the first half of the season. And then Stan just absolutely tore it up. Yeah. My strategy for when the season starts is to make sure to use your drops and adds to your advantage. That's the way to wire. Let's say, for instance, I'm really close to winning. I would pick up a starting picture against a bad team to make sure that I could win that that week. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention matchups. That's and funny. if I'm really low and or really up in the in the week, then I'm just gonna pick up somebody who's gonna improve my team next week. Way to wrap that one up. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked that video and that you win your fantasy league this year. Please like and subscribe and follow for more up to date coverage of fantasy baseball. You know what? I believe in you. Peace out.